Welcome to this video on some easy formatting tips that you can use in Microsoft Word. So I've got a Word document in front of me with some text. It's a lot of detail. It's formatted a little bit, but it could definitely be better. And I want to show you a few tips and tricks that I use to help me quickly format my documents. Now I get information from all over the place. It can be copied and pasted from PowerPoint, an email, from... Um, from a PDF and if it sometimes comes from different types of devices like a Mac to a Windows, the format can really, really play around. So there's some tips here that I want to share with you. Before I do, let's just talk very quickly about the different ways to select your text before we do look at the formatting options. So as standard, if you click, if you left click on the mouse and hold that down while you're dragging, then you'll be able to select the text within that. Very simple, very easy. If you wanna just select a word, then you're gonna double click on that word, left click, and it will select that word for you. And if you wanna select a whole sentence, if you're on a Windows device, control. If you're on a Mac, it's command. But if I hold control down and click into a sentence, then it will do the rest for me and it will select the whole sentence. So that's control on a Windows or command on a Mac and just click anywhere in the sentence and it will select the whole sentence. And then finally, if you want to select everything, you're going to come up to editing at the top. I'm on the home ribbon, the home tab and select and select all and it will select everything on your document. Anytime you want to come away from any of those selection options, just click anywhere else in the document and it will pull off. So that's really helpful and really easy. So now you know a little bit, a bit of a refresher there on selecting. Hopefully you've learned something new as well. The control or command key to select the sentence I find quite useful, especially if you want to highlight a sentence, you want to bold or italicize it. So let's have a look at some of the font formatting options that I use then. So first off, if you get some documents, if you get some data copied in or pulled over to you, and it just looks horrific and you want to start from scratch. There is a button called clear all formatting. So in the font section on my home tab, when you hover over your options, you'll see it does pop up and give you a bit of an idea just in case you're not sure what it is. Now you're looking for the letter A with what looks like a purple rubber on it. And this will clear all formatting. So I'm gonna select everything, go back to my editing and select all, and then just use the clear all formatting button. Now it's not made a massive amount of difference to here, but if you've got weird different fonts and different colors and things going on, it'll just take it all back to the standard default. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about default in a few minutes. But it's just removed anything and it's just much cleaner and easier for me to work with, especially if you've got weird things going on. Now that I've done that, let's have a look at some other options. So there's another function that I use quite often if I want to upper or lowercase any text. So just to the left and underneath that, there's a capital A and a lowercase a. And this is the change case option. So this will allow you, if I click on that drop down, to pull it from uppercase to lowercase. So if you've got all capitals, you can just pull it to a normal sort of lowercase or sentence case. And you can do the other thing and you can capitalize each word as well. So you've got a few options to play around with. You can see here on my document, I've got need in capital letters. Now I can probably overtype that very quickly, but let's just use that option to change that to sentence case. And you can see it's quite easily gone back to where it was. And if I want to move it back, I can obviously use the undo button or I can go back into that capitalization option and put it in uppercase. So it gives me the opportunity to quickly change different things. And if I use my control again and select this sentence, and let's just capitalize or uppercase all of that, you can see it works on obviously multiple texts as well, multiple words. So you can quickly remove all formatting. You can quickly change the case or add capital letters to the beginning 
what you can also do is at the top, obviously, in the font section, you can see the font that was selected and you can see the font size. Now I can go in there and obviously click on the drop down and over type it or select the font size that I'm looking for. But if I just want it to be a little bit bigger, I can use these two buttons here. So we've got the increase font size and decrease font size. If I just want to drop it down one or increase it one, I can just select and it actually goes up to so it goes from 12 to 14, which is one stage. I can obviously select 13 manually by typing it in, but just be aware it does go up. So it will go up to 16 if I select it again. And that's what you'll see on the drop down as well. Most of the time depends on your settings and what system you're using. I'll click on that list. You'll see it does go up in twos and then kicks in a little bit faster. So let's leave that at 14. So you can quickly go up a step or down a step with your font size using those two buttons as well. Just to the left and above that, you've got two other buttons which can be quite useful as well. You've got the subscript and the superscript. So these are the ones where you've got the X and the little two below or above. So it's showing you what that's going to look like. So if you've got, if you want to type something like H2O, then you might want to use the subscript to put the little, the O, the two where you want it to be. So it looks really nicely. And if you're doing a date, so you want to put the second and you want the ND to be higher up, then you're going to possibly use superscript. So let's just add these to the bottom and give you a little example. You see H2O there, but if I select my two and go to the subscript, it's dropped it down where I would expect where I would want it to be. Let's just make this a little bit bigger as well so we can see exactly what's going on at this point. So that was subscript there helping us with that one. Now, if I put second, like I said, in, if I press the space bar, this might do it automatically. And it has, but if it didn't, I would just select the N and the D and I would go to superscript. And then you can just format those bits of text nice and easy. If you're typing it in when you're doing dates, it will tend to do it for you. But if you copy and pasted that information in, you might need to go and do that manually. So a nice tip there, you've got a couple of different functions. Let's just come out of that and go just zoom out a little bit so we can see everything and just go back up to the top. So we've had a look at a few bits of font formatting that are there and available. There's another one I want to talk to you about. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner, you've got part of a box and an arrow. And I'm just going to click on that and open up the font box. Now this allows me to make a load of changes at the same time. But the one thing I wanted to point out in the bottom left hand corner, you've got set as default. Now at the moment, my default is, is um, body, is Aptos body. But if I want this to be Arial or Helvetica or something like that, I can just change my font size, my style. I can change my color if I want to. And then I can set that as default using the button in the bottom left hand corner. So whenever I open up a document, then that's going to come in that way and it's going to expect that formatting. And if I remove any weird formatting that's going on, it's going to revert back to what I've set as default. So that might be really helpful for you if you get const constantly get documents that are just a little bit crazy and you want to have a standard set default. You can define what you want it to be if you click on that little button in the bottom right hand corner of your font section and then just make your changes here and set as default in the bottom left. So let's quickly have a look at some paragraph tips and tricks. So it's showing hidden characters. If you've got some weird formatting going on, you're not sure what's going on. This funny icon here, which kind of looks like a backwards P and a T, is show all and it's going to show you any hidden characters, any hidden spaces, any line breaks or anything like that, anything that might be making your format in a little bit weird. So sometimes it's useful to just turn that on, have a look, make sure everything's good and then click it again to turn it off. Some people have it on all the time. I just find it a bit busy on my screen. So I only turn it on to have a little check.
And then there's line spacing as well. So line spacing is always a bit of an issue when I'm pulling my content in. So if I just select a paragraph here, and then what I want to do is go to the line and paragraph spacing, and I can click on that drop down, and I can see I've got a number of like one space, if you want double spaces. But what's probably useful is to just go to the line spacing options, and then you can see everything on there. So I can do any indentations if I want to indent it a little bit from the left or the right. And I've got my spacing. I've got multiple at the moment and I've got it set to something because that's how it came in when I pulled in my information. So I can change that to be exactly how I want it to be. And obviously, if I've selected a paragraph, it will only allocate it to that paragraph. So I can have different line spaces and things on different parts of my document. So something to really play around with. And also you'll notice at the bottom again, you've got a set as default. So again, if you've got a default formatting, then you can set that as your default and it will make your life so much easier. The last thing I want to show you is on this pop out. Now you can either get to it by popping out any of the other options or just like in the font section, the paragraph sections got a little pop out as well for the paragraph settings. And I want to go into line and page breaks. And another thing that sometimes frustrates me is I don't always want that hyphenate. If I'm typing in some words, sometimes the system wants to automatically hyphenate it and it, it doesn't like it if I've not done that. So sometimes you've got your need to turn things like that off and you'll find settings like that in the paragraph settings. So you can see I've got the don't hyphenate options. I can even suppress line numbers and other stuff. And you can see I've got loads of options on there. So you'll always find hidden options in the settings piece. And that's really what I wanted to show you with this last option. So there's a few nice tips and tricks there, removing all formatting, different highlighting and selection options, change your capitalizations, lowercase, uppercase, using that subscript and that superscript, and setting those defaults on the pop-out box for the fonts, and then for the paragraphs, show those hidden characters so you can see if there's anything weird going on in the background. Change that line spacing and paragraph spacing. And again, in that pop-out box, you have different options such as don't hyphenate. And again, you can set that default. So you've got loads of little tips and tricks there to help you quickly format your Word documents, especially if you're pulling them in from somewhere else and it's gone a little bit crazy. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what videos you'd like me to record next.